the topic we are covering today is um, hay fever or allergic rhinitis. Um, it is the season these days. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, the type of allergic rhinitis are seasonal or hay fever. Uh, more to do with grass, tree pollen and allergens. Uh, it is um, happening every year um, and almost same time uh, this year. Perennial is slightly different and lasts throughout the year and usually is because of dust mites or animal, uh, animals at home. And oral allergy syndrome is um, it's an important diagnosis to know. It is cross-reaction with pollen and foods and is allergic to tree pollen. It is associated with raw food, vegetables, tree nuts and the symptoms are normal itchy mouth and throat. Uh, occupational uh, rhinitis is allergen at workplace, uh, like in baker, bakeries, uh, people who work as painters. Giant papillary conjunctivitis is inflammation of the lining of the upper eyelid, having a um, small object in the eye, most commonly a contact lens at the, at the culprit. It sometimes develop after eye surgery. Contact conjunctivitis is more to do with cosmetics, makeups, um, and uh, idea to avoid using them. Um, if the skin is involved with conjunctivitis, called dermatoconjunctivitis. The investigation, there is no particular investigation very helpful. Um, in the diagnosis of um, hair fever. Um, the allergen specific IG antibody testing, like RAS test, can be used. Um, it is to detect uh, common allergens, dust mite, pollen, pet dander. Um, it is highly specific, but not as sensitive as skin prick test. It can also be used when percutaneous skin prick test is not practical or a patient using medication which interferes with skin testing or the word antihistamine. General measures, um, it, we can uh, uh, suggest using Sterimar or nasal irrigation with saline uh, to within the nasal cavity um, and it is available over the counter. Uh, be, Important thing is to avoid allergens. Um, there are some glasses available where they've got wrap around the sunglasses and avoid the uh, pollen going in your in eyes. Uh, people can use Vaseline or moisturizing cream around nose and mouth and that's to avoid allergen going, going in. Uh, bathing the eyes with cold water, soaked flannel or over-the-counter preparation of eye bath. And avoid rubbing eyes is quite important is to avoid the irritation. For people with uh, grass pollen, um, patient, the people should avoid working in grassy open spaces, avoid, uh, avoid drying washing outdoors during the season because that uh, the pollen sticks on uh, on clothes and they, that comes in. Uh, avoid opening windows in cars and buildings uh, and avoid planning holidays in high pollen season. Uh, shower or wash hair when exposed to high pollen um, as soon as possible. Uh, so if there is confirmed house, uh, house dust mite allergy, um, uh, patient people can use not fit mattresses, pillows and duvet with house dust mite impermeable covers, synthetic pillows and acrylic uh, duvet and um, avoid furry toys in the bed. Um, wash all bedding and furry toys minimum of once a week um, and uh, preferably have wooden or hard floor rather than carpets um, and easy wipe blind are quite helpful. If there is confirmed animal allergy, animals should not be allowed in the house um, or restrict to a kitchen if possible. Um, for occupational allergy, uh, try to eliminate or reduce exposure to sensitizing allergen uh, and try to use latex free gloves, um, adequate ventilation at work or um, and or re re uh, relocate to lower exposure area and avoid in contact with hazardous uh, chemicals. So the medications generally used are oral antihistamines, which are normally first-line drugs, which help with ocular sy uh, symptoms, uh, nasal ir uh, irritation, rhinorrhea, and sneezing, um, but limited effect on nasal congestion. Uh, nasal antihistamine are quite um, helpful. Uh, they foster onset of action compared to oral agents, and they reduce itching and sneezing, but again, not nasal congestion. Um, nasal corticosteroids, they are uh, first line and um, they are best in moderate to severe allergic rhinitis and uh, they're more effective in relieving symptoms like nasal congestion and sneezing than oral antihistamine. Now intraocular in antihistamines because um, the oral antihistamines are not as effective and in that situation um, they, uh, they act rapidly um, but 
the only uh, problem is they can only be used intermittently rather than continuously uh, so mild to moderate intermittent or my uh, symptoms or mild persistent symptoms now intranasal antihistamine uh, are uh, are used as first line as a last in it uh, is one of the best one that's the only one available in the uk um it, it has got a faster onset of action uh, more effective than oral preparation the um, second generation non sedating antihistamine like loratadine or cetirizine can also be used uh, and intranasal chromones um, sodium gl- uh, chromoglycate as a required medication uh, can be used if antihistamines are contraindicated or not tolerated in moderate to severe persistent symptoms intranasal corticosteroids during periods of allergen exposure can be used they include mometasone uh, furoate fluticasone furoate or fluticasone propionate the onset of action is about 6 to 8 Uh, hours but uh, the maximum for effect is achieved after 2 to 3 weeks so it shouldn't be uh, assessed before 2 weeks nasal drops can be used if there is uh, severe nasal obstruction um, and there's no evidence of additional benefit if extra doses are, are taken uh, so what kind of uh, so the kind of allergy is quite important so people who have got um, house dust mite or pets uh, in home uh symptoms last throughout the year regarding ongoing treatment throughout the year uh people who are allergic to tree pollens that is um early to late spring that is february to june and people who have got grass pollen allergy and uh, that lasts from late spring to early summer that is may to july weed pollen is from june to september um and in good condition for mold that is september of an october or throughout the year um the mold allergy can come up If there are recurrent episodes of symptom control by intranasal corticosteroid patient uh, are to restart treatment 2 weeks before exposure to causative allergen if the time of re-exposure is un- uncertain then a uh, start of the pollination uh, so it should be start uh, uh, at the pollination season a uh, season uh, patients can start it with several weeks before the most likely time of re-exposure um patients should be uh, a plan to be reviewed after 2 to 4 weeks uh, but if symptoms are uncontrolled then uh, after initial management and drug therapy then we need to kind of reassess whether uh, regarding the compliance whether the initial drug treatment um is uh, is the best or uh, the technique is or uh, correct um and alternative diagnosis has to be reconsidered as well stepping up the treatment um so for nasal congestion ephedrine or zolomatosine um up to 5 to 7 days can be used but it's only short term use uh, and that should be specified and for persistent watery uh, rhinorrhea intranasal anticholinergic like epitropic bromide can be used for persistent nasal itching and sneezing and um, there's a combination uh, of azelastin and fluticasone uh, something called uh, demesta that can be used as well If patient is known to have asthma um and they have got allergy symptom motive to cost can be a quite a quite a good option. Um so for severe and uncontrolled symptoms a short course or a short course of oral corticosteroids uh, can be used for rapid control of symptoms. Uh, the typical dose is prednisone 0.5 mg per kg um and typically um or most mostly 20 mg to 30 mg is used for up to 5 days. For children, prednisolone 10 to 15 mg in the morning for 3 to 7 days can be used. Um, but patients should continue using an intranasal corticosteroid to allow improvement, uh, improved intranasal drug penetration. Other treatment that can be found um, in literature are a depot corticosteroid uh, IM that is 100 mg of uh, equivalent to 100 mg of prednisolone and usually it was trimsolone um, which was used in the called Kenalog. So if referral for specialist uh, for treatment of allergy or uh, ENT if there are red flag symptoms like unilateral symptoms blood stain nasal discharge recurrent abscesses uh, or nasal pain uh, they require urgent two week wait referral and um, if there is predominant nasal obstruction or there is structural abnormality then patient require referral to ENT but there is not two week wait a uh, persistent symptom despite optimal management and primary care uh, they again refer, require referral to allergy specialist for allergy testing uh, uh, or possible immuno- immunotherapy treatment uh, if symptoms are not improving uh, so allergy avoidance techniques should be used and skin prick allergy tests can be used to confirm this possible allergy 
Um, if there is uncertainty regarding diagnosis, again refer to um, ENT or specialist. So the, for the immunotherapy, there are a couple of uh, techniques available. It's subcutaneous uh, immunotherapy and sublingual immunotherapy. Essentially, it is for desensitization. Uh, it is done under specialist. If patient is pregnant and they are known to have hay fever, they can potentially use uh, topical intranasal baclomethasone um, and or um, sodium chromoglycate, intranasal or intraocular, uh, this is the first line. All decongestants are not generally recommended. And topical antihistamines are preferred over oral antihistamines. For allergic uh, conjunctivitis, we need to look out for red flag symptoms. Uh, so any red eye, um, uh, any symptom of, uh, um, of clinical features of uh, serious cause of red eye, they have to be um, considered and referred. If patient has got suspected periorbital or orbital cellulitis, um, or they've got severe disease uh, like corneal ulceration, cigarette keratitis, or presence of pseudomembrane, um, or if they have uh, had a recent intraocular surgery, um, or they've got conjunctivitis associated with severe systemic condition like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, or they, have, uh, they are immunocompromised in any way. If they've got corneal involvement with soft contact lens juice, um, then whilst we are, they are waiting to be seen, do not give any antibiotic. Uh, it may interfere with the uh, corneal culture. So known pharmacological treatment uh, for allergic conjunctivitis, um, there's avoidance of allergen like we have discussed before. So uh, dust mite, mold, animal dander, um, avoidance of pets, proper ventilation, washing hair, avoiding of eye rubbing, uh, cold compresses, um, and lubricants like saline solution or artificial tears, um, and uh, patients shouldn't drive or perform skilled tasks after uh, using eye drops or eye ointment until vision is clear. And that should be mentioned and documented in the notes. Allergic conjunctivitis or pharmacological treatment, uh, topical antihistamine uh, or dual action mass cell stabilizer and topical antihistamine are not licensed in young children. And topical antihistamine uh, combined with vasoconstrictor agent, uh, the chronic use of these products is associated with rebound vasodilation. It should be used in short term. Then mass cell stabilizers can be used if symptoms are recurrent or persistent, a long loading period is required and they need to be applied routinely for several weeks to provide prophylactic benefit. If patients use contact lens, they should avoid their use of the duration of topical treatment. Topical mass cell stabilizer, for example, sodium chromoglycate, um, used throughout a period of allergen exposure. And there are some new agents like nodoxamine uh, and uh, nidochromil. Uh, they may be effective in those with uh, an inadequate response to sodium chromoglycate. Uh, so uh, oral antihistamine like loratadine and chlorophenamine can be used, um, but they can be sedative. Uh, some other treatments include declofenac and um, amidastine, um, but in general, um, and they are licensed for um, seasonal allergic conjunctivitis. Uh, another point to remember is that generally corticosteroid containing ointments or drops should be avoided and should be left uh, with a specialist. For uh, allergic conjunctivitis, we can use a combination of uh, antazoline with zalometazoline, uh, and the trade name is otribine and uh, antistin. Uh, that can be used, and there are some other uh, options as well. The important thing to know about that is it's not appropriate for prolonged use no longer than six weeks and children under age uh, 12 years uh, and people with uh, uh, intraocular pressure should not use them. Not appropriate uh, treatment option in contact dermatoconjunctivitis. Um, so the treatment of giant pulmonary conjunctivitis is mainly for specialists, um, but it is important to know that if you're suspecting that we need to refer on. Uh, these are websites for some information um, and um, um, that's it for today um, and we'll probably um, see you